All right, welcome back, CSE 3200 Yukon Stores. We're in video two of chapter 12. In video one, we introduced uh, coroutines, and the idea is we've got a database coming, not this video, but um, in video three, we'll have a database coming into play, and databases are time consuming, and we need them to work on different threads, okay? And our coroutines do use threads behind the scenes, so we talked about that in video one. In this video, we are going to show that we can create our own suspending functions, which make use of coroutines. Um, and, and we'll show a couple of examples, but we'll also show that it might actually be a little bit easier to just use a built-in function, um, use repeat on lifecycle to manage our coroutine. So let's get into it. So we can make our own suspending functions. Uh, they can you know, take any kind of parameters, have any kind of input or output. Uh, it's just all we have to do is add the suspend up there in the corner, add the suspend modifier into the function definition. Now this does limit where we can call a suspend function because it does require that it is done inside of a suspending function. Uh, but suspending functions have the ability to call other suspending functions. So the first thing we're going to do, and, and we will keep this bit of code, is we are going to change what we just put in in our last uh, video inside of our view model. We, um, we launched our data inside of a view model scope, but there was a lot more code right here. We're going to take that code out, the code that made crimes by going through the list, and we're just going to put it in a separate function. And well, first of all, that uh, to, to compartmentalize that makes it a little bit more uh, maintainable, but it is also going to demonstrate that I can create my own suspend function and I can call them from other suspend functions. Now, um, remember that this is a view model scope. So I can call a uh, suspend function within it. All right, so let's get into that inside of our code. Let's take out this for loop and the delay and leave the log. So let's cut that. And uh, let's put it inside of suspend fun load crimes. Which will return a list of crime objects. And let's paste that. Now in front of the delay, we want to put in val result is equal to a mutable list of crime objects so that we can return those objects uh, but instead of crimes plus equals crime this is going to be result plus equals crime and once we are out of the for loop we will return result all right, let me check that. Yep, that looks good. All right, so we're gonna come up here to our init function. Uh, we have our beginning log, we called launch, we call the coroutine launched. Okay, that's good. All of this is kept except for we are going to go crimes plus equals load crimes. And there we go. And basically, this should behave the same way. It's just going to show you that you can call one, uh, you can call a, um, a suspend function from within our uh, coroutine scope. So let's take a look and make sure it works. And I'll go back to the log cat. And we have our five second delay. And there it is. Yep, it worked the same as it did before. 
Okay, now on this slide here, um, almost all of this is old information. We have seen the, the, the fragment life cycle um, before in previous chapters, and we'd already mentioned these two things over here. However, um, you can manage your coroutine work using something called a job instance. Now we'd only want to do this like when it is visible. So we would probably want to start the coroutine work when, um, whenever we are in the start position, when we call on start so we can get to the started state. So we would probably want our coroutine to work here. But if we are heading back from uh, resumed to started or better yet from started to uh, created, then we probably want to end it with a call to on stop. Now, I'm just going to show an example of the book's code and I'm not going to put this code in. Um, I just wanted to point out that, you know, when, when you make this job, you have got to remember that, you know, you want to cancel that job. And we basically have got to put uh, code and, and two methods and, and override you know, the, the two methods there. So we can, we can do it this way, it's perfectly legitimate, but there is another option. We could use the built-in repeat on life cycle. With the repeat on life cycle, you can execute the code while it's in a specific life cycle state. So um, you, Oh, also, the uh, repeat on life cycle is a suspending function. So that means that we could just have this sort of running at all times and not have to worry about overwriting multiple life cycle methods and remember to cancel. Uh, so we're going to call the repeat on life cycle method in on view created. Let's get into it. We want to go into Crime list fragment. Override fun on view created. Those lines are going to get kept. View life cycle owner. Dot life cycle scope. Dot launch. Begin curly brace. View life cycle owner. Dot repeat on life cycle in as a parameter life cycle dot state dot started all right let's take care of these errors we need some imports Uh, life cycle is not giving me an import. It wants to create a, uh, a new class. So something else is wrong with it. It's misspelled. Okay. Uh, begin and end curly braces and val crimes is equal to crime list view model. Uh, that'd be lowercase c dot load crimes and then binding dot crime recycler view dot adapter is equal to crime list adapter this time uppercase passing in crimes all right something else is wrong with state Uh, these the val crimes should be inside of these curly braces. And now I probably need another set of curly braces. Let's see. I think so. All right. 
Uh, still got a problem with state. State should be capitalized. Okay, let's run it. Now what should happen is that I should actually get the list to populate after a five second delay because now it's part of a coroutine where the view model is, the creation of the view model has been held until the started state. And that's what we have, okay. So before we go, let's clean up the code a little bit. Surprisingly, in, um, in the fragment, we don't need to override the onCreate, and we certainly don't need the log statement anymore. Um, that's, we didn't need to know that there were 100 crimes a long time ago. Let's get rid of that. And we also do not need these three lines of code put in very late in Chapter 10 because it is trying to initialize your crime list adapter with missing data. So we'll get rid of that, uh, and let's see that it is still running okay. And again, let's look out for the five second delay as, it, um, as the white screen pops up. Not that one, but uh, coming up here. Okay, from here, now let's rotate this and Let's see, okay, there it's gone back and notice that we have another delay. Now we are going to get rid of that delay eventually. All right, so that is going to wrap up our uh, video number two. In video number three, we will delve into creating our database. I'll see you there.